Hey guys, welcome to the third video in the series of Scamp School in partnership with DnD Newblood for this year's 2017 briefs. If you haven't already, don't forget that you can still download the briefs from DnD's site. We've got a link in the description, and be sure to check out Scamp School's main channel for extra tips or advice on scamping. So, hopefully at this stage you've had time to look at the briefs, break them down, and start having some initial ideas. But how you present those ideas is sometimes just as important as the ideas themselves. No one will understand your brilliance if you fail to communicate it clearly and succinctly. So for today's episode, we're going to look at just that, with how to present ideas. Now for this video, we're not just going to cover presenting ideas to DNAD judges, we also want to talk about some of the best practices for sharing ideas with tutors, judges, and even in your first job. To start with, what is it that makes for a good deck? In our opinion, it breaks down to these three elements. Clear ideas, simple visuals, and telling a story. Going into more detail on those, the very first task you should do once you've got your idea is to give it a name. You have no idea how many ideas are sold because of their catchy titles. A title works so well because it gives your creative director or client a way to refer to the idea in shorthand. It's easier to keep in the memory than a full-on paragraph of description. After that, you want to write a brief description for your entire creative thought. The simplest way to think of this is like an elevator pitch. How do you describe your idea if you only had 30 seconds? What are the absolute vital components of the idea? What's the context for why it's such a brilliant idea? And why should I carry on listening by the time you finish this sentence? Now, although these two things could be argued as part of a copywriter's realm, there's a real knack to writing a description that's simple, clear, and exciting. So take the time to work on this together, show it to people, see if they understand it, and then rewrite it till it's perfect. After that, it's time to see some pictures. Hopefully by this point, whoever is listening to your description has their imagination sparking, coming up with how they see this thought in their heads. Which is great, but you want to ensure before they get too far down the line, you relay how you see this vision. And that's often best achieved with either a key visual or a mood board. A key visual can be a scamp, a mocked up design, the perfect photograph, or even a piece of art. But its ultimate purpose is to say, here is the idea, here is exactly what it will look like. A mood board, on the other hand, is when you can't find something that perfectly represents your thought. So you display a combination of images that collectively put across a tone of your idea. We've got a video on Scamp School's main channel for creating mood boards, if you want help with creating a smart looking one. By this stage, your reader should know what your idea is, how you envision seeing it, and what it's called for them to refer back to later. With these three elements, you've given your idea the best possible chance of being understood, and you've hopefully done this in something that only takes 30 seconds to go through. From here on in, it comes down to the individual brief. Whether that be going into press executions or full-blown digital app ideas, the trick is to always keep it as short and simple as possible. Keep your descriptions minimal. The judges and even creative directors or tutors will see hundreds of ideas on any given day. So keep yours concise and to the point and they'll remember them better. Finally, we just want to touch on a few housekeeping elements to your creative presentation decks. First, keep them neat. InDesign, PowerPoint, Photoshop, whichever you choose to make your deck with have lots of tools to make sure things line up evenly in a graphical way. It's more pleasing to the eye when things are symmetrical, and it's amazing how distracted people can become if something looks out of place or off-centre, which all detracts from your idea. As well as that, don't forget a border. It always helps your ideas look neat, and consider placing the client's logo somewhere on the deck. Make it feel like it's for them. Lastly, try and create a consistent theme throughout your deck. Perhaps it's always having copy on the left and images full bleed on the right, or perhaps only using full bleed images on every page. Or the opposite, no images, but a mood board and really small, sophisticated fonts. Just take the time to consider either the brand you're working on, or your idea, and how best represents it. Hopefully guys, that helps you with how to get your ideas down in the best manner possible. As always, these aren't the absolute rules of presenting ideas, but just some methods we've discovered over our time in the industry, and what's had success for us. Keep an eye out for the next video, where Jack is going to take a look at how to achieve a DNAD Nubud quality finish to your ideas. Until then, don't forget to subscribe to Scamp School and DND's channels if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.